Hey, welcome back to New England Fire Cooking. I'm Aaron Higgins, and it's Veterans Day weekend. And uh, what better way to honor our veterans than to cook a giant slab of beef ribs? I've got this huge rack of beef ribs. This is only about three bones. And as you can see, you got some great, great marbling uh, in these beef ribs. Uh, without further ado, let's get them seasoned. Let's get them seasoned. This is going to take uh, several hours to do this. We're starting these in the morning, and this is what we're going to eat for dinner. Let's fire it up. Okay, for our seasoning today, we're going to be using our bullshit seasoning. We're going to start with that. There's a membrane on the bottom of this, uh, similar to pork ribs, but we're going to be leaving that on. And the reason we're going to leave that membrane on is so that these don't fall apart when they're on the grill. So if you come over the top of this with a good even coating, Just give it a good pat afterwards. Don't forget to get your edges, get your sides. And then for our second coating of rub, we are going to use some Black Rifle Coffee AK-47 uh, ground espresso, All right? And if you haven't checked out Black Rifle Coffee, you really should. Uh, they make a really good cup of coffee. They're veteran owned and operated. You can check them out on YouTube and Instagram. Their, uh, their YouTube videos are awesome. They're uh, really, really, seem like a really cool bunch of guys. So in honor of our veterans today, we're gonna be topping this with a little Black Rifle coffee. And this will just uh, give us a little bit more of a flavor pop and uh, help us develop a nice crust of rub on this, uh, this rack of beef roots here. already starting to smell good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this thing hang out for a little while. We're gonna go get the grill up to 10. Today we're gonna be smoking this on my Traeger pellet smoker, and we're gonna be running right around 275. Okay, our grill's up to 10. We're gonna throw these bad boys right on. They're starting to sweat really, really nicely. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this big end up on top of our heat. Heat's coming up over here, so we're gonna throw the big end, the thicker end, where our heat's most concentrated. And we'll check back in three hours, stick around. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a, uh, just a uh, spray to, uh, to keep these ribs nice and moist as they're cooking. So uh, what I've got here is I've got a cup and a half of beef broth, I've got uh, a third a cup of, um, just uh, Cabernet, red wine. And then we're gonna throw in two shots of uh, Lafroy 10 year uh, Isla Single Malt Scotch. This stuff is really, really smoky and it's not sweet like bourbon. You don't want any sugar in this at all. So we're gonna mix all this together, get it in a spray bottle, and then we can mist our ribs uh, to keep them nice and uh, moist and tender as they, uh, as they smoke. Okay, this is gonna be perfect. We're gonna go down, we're gonna mist our ribs, and uh, we're gonna check the temperature. Okay, we're at 166 on these ribs, and now it's time to start spraying these. So as you can see, they come in nice and close. So as you can see, we got some drawback on these bones, and this bark's really starting to look good, and that's what we want. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap these at about 185, 190. So we got another 20 degrees to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give these a light mist. You don't want to wash off the rub that you worked really hard to turn into a bark. You don't want to wash that bark off. But what you do want to do is what you want to hit these a little bit just to keep them moist, to keep them from completely drying out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get it closed again. We're going to leave this down here and we're going to come back. We're going to check this in an hour and we're going to give it another mist. Stick around. 
Okay guys, so as you can see, we're starting to get some real nice color on these. I just gave them a spritz. Uh, we're closing in on about 175, so we want about another 10, maybe 15 degrees uh, before we wrap. But you can see we're getting some really good pullback on these bones, color on these ribs. It's just absolutely awesome. And uh, we're gonna get this thing closed because it's cold out here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in about uh, 15 degrees. Stick around. Okay, so my probe just gave me a reading of 187 degrees and that's the perfect time to get these bad boys wrapped. I wanna show you these things really quick. Now this is why we don't take that membrane off the back. As you can see, it's dried out a little bit, but it's holding this rack together. If I took that membrane off like you would a set of uh, uh, pork ribs or a baby back, um, this whole rack of ribs would have fallen apart. Um, another qu uh, question you guys might have, or at least some of you might have, is why I let this sit on smoke until it reached 187? Why didn't I wrap it at 165 like most people do? Well, this bark that we put on there, I really, really, really wanted to preserve that. I didn't want it to just wash away um, and let it steam off um, in a wrap. I know a lot of people wrap with foil, but what I try to do with, uh, with ribs like this and brisket is wrap in this red butcher paper because what it allows, it allows some moisture out, but not all of it. So it still steams a little bit. I do want some of this uh, moisture to come out of this so you have a nice crust. You have a really nice crusty rub. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get these bad boys wrapped and then they're gonna go back on the grill until they hit 200 degrees. And after they hit 200 degrees, I'm gonna leave them wrapped right in the butcher paper and I'm gonna let them rest for at least an hour. You could easily go two hours. So let me come right over. And you gotta be a little bit careful about this so you don't get, um, so you don't poke holes in your paper from, uh, from your bones. We'll pull all this right over. Make a nice little meat package. And uh, now it's gonna go back on the grill and I'll see you at 200 degrees. Stick around. Okay guys, so this rack of ribs has been resting for an hour. You could let it go too, but I can't wait anymore. I totally cannot wait anymore. We've got a nice tossed salad. We've got some potatoes that are roasting in the oven right now, but I'm gonna get right into this because uh, quite frankly, this is the star of the show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing out of the, uh, the butcher paper and as you can see you get a lot of grease this is what i was talking about with the with it being semi-permeable so you can let some moisture escape we've got our beautiful beautiful bark that is nice and crusty on there that bark is what we uh this bark is what we really really strive to keep right here i mean this is just awesome everything about this is just awesome we got the membrane on the back we're just holding these bad boys together okay look at that that bone's ready to just come right out of there you could rip this whole thing apart but we're not going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to flip this thing over and we're going to slice right between the bones so what we're going to do is we're going to slice right between these bones. And will you look at that? Look at that right there. See how juicy that is? That is exactly what you want. At least that's what I want, one of these beef ribs. We'll cut right in and slice them. I mean, this is just coming right off the bone, guys. I mean, that's just ready to come right off, and it's just ready to be eaten. So, uh, so before I ha ha do do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick run through of what we did to get this uh, to get this desired effect. 
So what we had was we had a rack of plate ribs. You gotta be really, really careful. When you go to the butcher, uh, butcher shop, you don't wanna say, give me some beef short ribs. That's not, you don't want the little, the little guys because it's just gonna be way, way, way too small. You want plate ribs. I don't care what anybody tells you. It might be different in your part of the country and that's okay, but you wanna make sure that you're getting these big dino bones, you know, uh, like Fred Flintstone style beef ribs. You don't want the little short guys because by the time you cook them, you'll have, you know, this itty bitty tiny ass piece of meat on there and it's just not gonna, it, it's not gonna be this. You want this. <laughs> so make sure you get plate ribs. And then afterwards, all we really did was we uh, we came over with the uh, with the bullshit rub and the uh, black rifle coffee AK forty seven espresso and uh, whole cook I mean it's about eight o'clock right now and we started these at ten thirty this morning so that gives you an idea of how long you know it could potentially take for you to cook one of these it might take a little bit less time if you're in a warmer environment than where we are right now um, but uh, but at the end of the day. You know, patience is a virtue when you're cooking beef. When you're doing stuff like this and you're doing brisket, patience is a total, total virtue. You really want to exercise that fruit of the spirit when it comes to cooking beef on a smoker. Okay, so bullshit rub, AK-47 rub, uh, not AK-47 rub, black rifle, <laughs> black rifle coffee, uh, ground AK-47 espresso. Uh, is what we use in honor of our veterans uh, this particular weekend, it was Veterans Day weekend. And then went right on the smoker at 275 and we let that roll until it got to be right around 180, 185 degrees. And that's when we wrapped it in red butcher paper, okay? Prior to wrapping it, what we did was after the three hour mark, we sprayed it with the, uh, with the mist of the red wine, beef broth, and scotch. And we only did that, I wanna say, I think we did it about three times. Three times we kept it nice and moist and we ended up with this beautiful crust on there. I mean, this isn't just rubbing off. This hasn't washed off. This is perfect. This is utterly perfect. And then once uh, once we hit 185, uh, I think we wrapped at 187 if I remember right. We wrapped them in butcher paper, we got it back on there, and we pulled it off when it hit 200 degrees. We set it in a pan, covered it, and rested it for an hour. You could let this go two hours if you really wanted to. Textbook would be two hours, but an hour will work just fine, and an hour is about all I'm willing to take. So at this point, what I wanna do, before uh, before I, uh, I take a bite of this, I just want to say a big old thank you to our Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, our law enforcement officers, and our firefighters, and of course, because my brother-in-law, Anthony, Anthony Paulo, USMC, this is going out to you. This is your recipe. Take it and do whatever you want with it, brother. Semper Fi, here's mud in your eye. Ho <coughs> ho! And will you look at that? Well, that's a chaser to boot, I gotta tell you. Man. This is the smallest one. <laughs> and that's perfect. That is so tender. Look at that bite. Look at that bite. Went right through it. This is ribeye steak that I'm biting through. And we are way over well done here. We are way over well done. But when you get it nice and tender like this, and like I said, patience. One of the fruits of the spirit. Exercise it when you're cooking beef. Get that out of there. We don't need the dangler. <laughs> we have a little membrane dangling. But I'm telling you, do beef right. Do beef right. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's perfectly seasoned. This bark is so packed with flavor. I don't even know where to begin. I don't. This is easily better than any steak I've eaten. That's a little bit of a stretch, but this is pretty, pretty, pretty freaking close because this is wicked freaking good. I mean, this is just coming right off the bone, guys. And you know something? 
wrap at 185. Forget 165, that's too soon. Don't wrap that early. You get amazing, amazing bark if you let it take some smoke right to 185. You could even go 190. I could say you could wrap for the last 10 minutes, uh, 10 degrees of this cook. And you knock it right out of the park. This is basically eating brisket off of a bone. And this bark is better than some of the brisket I've cooked. You know, and beef's tricky, guys. It really is. It's tricky. You got to let it rest. You got to let it do its thing. You got to let the juice run back into the meat. If we were to bite right into it, right after it came off the grill, all the juice would run out of the meat. You'd have, you'd have dry beef. You don't want that. You really don't. You want tender friggin' vittles is what you want. This is amazing. This is absolutely killer. I could eat this all day, every day. You've heard me say it before. This is absolutely phenomenal. And leaving the membrane on the back side held this thing together. Held this rack together perfectly. Listen, guys. If you like this, you like this type of stuff and you like what you see here, okay, give us a subscribe. If you haven't su subscribed yet, you really should. You are not going to go wrong. And whatever you do, certainly do not use a lot of this stuff in your spray, okay? You don't want to waste good scotch because this is the best scotch in the world, bar none. <laughs> Regardless, this is... I'm at a loss. I'm at a complete loss for words on this one. It's just coming right off. Best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. Listen, we're really glad you guys hung out with us today. This is a really long cook. This ran all day. This ran absolutely all day, but I gotta tell you, once again, patience. Exercise some patience, and when you have this at the end of the day, when you can sit here and hold up a bone that's nearly the size of my forearm, that you had delicious ribeye steak on that's falling off and is melt in your mouth delicious, it, the patience is totally worth it. Totally worth it. Anyway, to all of our service uh, members, happy Veterans Day. I hope you all had a great day. I hope you all drank one for me. And, um, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.